Hi everybody and good evening. It's Friday. I don't know about you, but this one feels as though it's been a little long getting here. We're so glad to have you with us tonight. A whole lot of news to cover before we leave you for the weekend. Weather-wise, warm and humid conditions will continue. Uh, cold fronts coming, some upper level disturbances. All that equals some scattered showers through tomorrow evening. But a few words that I haven't uttered in quite some time, those being high pressure, are going to give us a couple of Nice, dry, calm days, mostly clear, sunshine above, not too bad temperature-wise. Haven't had a couple of those in a row, and I really can't tell you how long. So I'll be glad, pretty glad to tell you about the updates we have in tonight's forecast. Our headlines tonight will include, as I told you on last night's program, indictments returned by a Johnson County grand jury. Several people from Johnson and McGoffin counties uh, involved in those indicted, I believe a total of 16 different individuals. A young man seriously injured in an ATV accident. A video taken during the daylight hours today appears to show an ATV, a four-wheeler that went over the embankment to the tune of 100 feet or so after uh, going over some small trees. A uh, very lucky young man from what we're being told, still actually gathering some details about the accident and hopefully his condition. And we're going to talk with our most recent foreign exchange student here in McGoffin County who has gotten on a plane and headed to New York where he's going to be an ambassador, the first ever from McGoffin County who's been chosen to do so. For a few weeks, but while his time was spent here, Ian Chung made an everlasting impression on a whole lot of folks, and we're going to talk about his experiences here and those of the family who hosted him, and talk about the exchange program in and of itself, with the thoughts and maybe expectations that it might interest some other folks out there to follow suit of the Pruitt family. So all that and more in just a few moments. We'll go ahead and begin right now with indictments returned by the Johnson County Grand Jury and all 16 individuals, I do believe, on several charges. And as is often the case, many are drug, theft, and other crime-related. The list begins with 47-year-old Charles Dean Tackett of Paintsville, who was indicted on a charge of theft by deception over $10,000 and a charge of criminal possession of a forged instrument in the second degree. The indictment reads that he tried to use a forged check written to Short's Farm Center to purchase equipment estimated to be worth $12,440. A 37-year-old Sitka man, Joseph Todd Witten, was indicted on criminal mischief charges facing up to five years in prison after he reportedly vandalized and or damaged a pickup truck that belonged to a neighbor. Damian Belcher, 20, from Oil Springs, is indicted on a charge of trafficking in a controlled substance in the first degree, that being less than 4 grams of cocaine, also trafficking in marijuana, a quantity less than 8 ounces, operating a motor vehicle under the influence of drugs and or alcohol, that's the first offense, and trafficking in a controlled substance third degree, that's said to be less than 20 dosage units, and possession of drug paraphernalia. Two Sagersville residents named as 29-year-old Jared Nicely and 33-year-old Terry Lewis were indicted on charges of possession of a controlled substance in the first degree that carries a penalty of up to three years in prison and a fine of up to $10,000, as well as charges of possession or use of drug paraphernalia and complicity. Also indicted on drug charges, Antonia Carol Farias, 32, from Sitka, who was indicted on account of possession of a controlled substance in the first degree and possession or use of drug paraphernalia. And after using a fake or fraudulent check to make purchases and reportedly pay their personal bills, James K. Adams, 26, from Flat Gap, and 23-year-old Tiffany Lynn Adams of Paintsville were each charged and indicted with criminal possession of a forged instrument with complicity in the second degree, and Adams was also charged with being a persistent felony offender in the second degree. Two other Paintsville residents, 27-year-old Ryan Blair and 27-year-old Brittany Wells, were indicted on charges of fraudulent use of a credit card over $500, each facing up to five years in jail, while Blair was also charged as being a persistent felony offender in the first degree. 36-year-old Jessica Pentecuff of East Point was indicted on a charge of possession of a controlled substance in the first degree, as well as operating a motor vehicle under the influence of drugs and or alcohol in the first offense, and for traffic violations including failure to produce an insurance card and failure to wear seat belts. 21-year-old Brittany Music of Paintsville was indicted on a count of bail jumping in the first degree and faces up to five years in jail and a fine of up to $10,000. Also for the exact same charge, 48-year-old Jackie Allen, also with a Paintsville address, indicted on bail jumping in the first degree. And for violating conditions of his house arrest after removing his ankle monitoring bracelet, 
40-year-old Benny Eugene McKenzie of Falcon was indicted on a count of escape in the second degree. Jerry Preston from Boone's Camp and 41 years of age was indicted on a charge of possession of a controlled substance in the first degree, possession or use of drug paraphernalia, and escape in the second degree, as well as being a persistent felony offender in the second degree. The indictment details that the escape charge comes from trying to elude authorities after they had handcuffed him and took him in custody. And lastly, 49-year-old Jerry Mormon of West Van Leer indicted on account of possession of a controlled substance in the first degree, now facing up to three years in prison. I'll be right back. For high-speed internet starting at 15 meg for all of your gaming, movie, home, and business solutions, or to watch TV, including your favorite local channels, without a contract, with hundreds of channels, and digital and HD quality, and to stay connected 24-7 with friends and family, a direct line to 911, or to give your business the link it needs, choose telephone service you know is always there. Just click on their link on this site to find out how affordable the latest technology and communications can be. Foothills Communications. A young man, a juvenile, I believe, at the age of 17, was seriously injured, but perhaps fortunate not to have been injured any more than he was, in an ATV accident, a four-wheeler which went over the embankment for a great distance very early this morning. The McGoffin County Rescue Squad and other EMS were called out at about 4.30 near the mcgoffin Breathitt County line. It was right around that time that 911 notified the Middle Fork Fire Department, Transtar Ambulance Service, and McGoffin Rescue, a subject who was at a residence near the county line, who had apparently walked all the way from the accident location to that vicinity looking for help. At the time of arrival upon emergency personnel, they found a young man, a juvenile at the age of 17, with what appeared to be possibly a closed head injury. While he was alert and conscious, he was also giving inconsistent information as to where and how the accident happened, and they feared as though he may have struck his head. They were unable to find the accident scene in the darkness of the morning to try to find out further what may have happened, but... They did have enough information that the paramedics thought that he needed to be life flighted to a trauma center. They called Air Methods Kentucky 9, who was going to land at the landing zone established at the Middle Fork Volunteer Fire Department. Just before they touched down, however, they were advised that they couldn't fly to any trauma centers if they left this location because they had all just fogged in. And then a ground fog in that few moments moved in over the landing zone, and they had to abort their mission and go back to their base. So the juvenile was taken by ambulance to the Palby Hall Medical Center and from there to the Pikeville Medical Center to its trauma unit. Later today, a camera accompanied the McGough County Rescue Squad searching for the accident scene. They came upon some skid marks on the gravel road. They also noticed some grass pushed over and some trees broken down what appeared to be the cap belonging to the juvenile, uh, which had fell off as he just went over the embankment. And then they found the ATV, as you just saw, some 100 feet over that embankment, upside down. In an update just this afternoon, I am told that the juvenile, the young man, has been moved into a private room. Uh, he was determined to have had a closed head injury, but that he was doing a well alert and conscious and had no other life-threatening injuries after being examined closely. This was a very, very close situation. Now, on a much lighter note, <laughs> that's a real pun there for a light bread, the McGoffin County Rescue Squad and the Sheriff's Department was called out to an incident in the Mountain Parkway this right around 540 or a little bit earlier this afternoon as I'm just gathering a few brief details. It appears as though an individual was bringing, truck, bringing a truck that was towing a trailer with two large pallets completely packed full of bread to be taken to the Lakeview Church to be distributed, uh, and a strap failed and broke, and there were two pallets of bread thus thrown all over the parkway. And his, his cargo of all those loaves of all sorts of bread and buns would not make it to the Lakeview Church, or Lakefront Church, my apologies. Uh, nevertheless, we are glad to report that it didn't cause any other accidents or injuries, and they were able to quickly pick up the bread and clean the parkway, and it will be back to its normal flow of traffic. Just an unusual mishap. This is about all you can say. Our other top headline is a good one tonight. It's one of those feel-good stories that might even be a little inspirational for some folks. That's kind of the gist of things. We'll get to that in just a second right now. I've got a birthday. I've got a lost puppy announcement that they're hoping uh, you can help them with. There's even a cash reward being offered and a few other things to pass along on your McGoffin Farm Bureau calendar for the weekend. I've got a happy 77th birthday 
He's still 76 and will be tomorrow, but Sunday, Bill Poe, it's 77. And to Bill Poe, with a lot of love from your wife and your daughters, happy, happy, albeit early, birthday. I've also got a family hoping that you can help them find their lost loved one, the little miniature pincher here in her arms, which has been missing. And I actually, they had called in yesterday, like around 4.30 or 5, and we were already in edit, and I couldn't get it on the program. So uh, now this information is just about 24 hours past that. So they're desperately hoping that someone has some information about their little miniature pincher called Hershey, who was last seen in the old Lick Creek Road area. Now they are offering a $100 reward, just hoping they can get their baby back. If you have any information, may have seen Hershey or in that area or maybe a little farther out, call Tabitha Mann at 349-6010. That's 6010. $100 and some hopes that they'll be reunited with their pet. Remember, the farmer's market opens up bright and early. That's bright and early for me. 10 o'clock tomorrow, they'll sail to their out all sorts of wonderful, great fresh produce from their garden and a whole lot of other baked goods and other things you just can't find anywhere else. Very unique and a great deal and a great opportunity starting at 10 o'clock in the morning. Some advice, get there early. And from our friends at the Kearney Free Will Baptist Church, Vacation Bible School starts this coming Monday. It is, and I've still got that on there wrong, my goodness. It's Monday through Friday, but it's 5.30 to 8. I can't believe I missed that again. 5.30 to 8 next week at Kearney Free Will Baptist for Submerged, Finding the Truth Below the Surface at Vacation Bible School. Once again, 5.30 on Monday. This just in, just not on your screen, the Sagersville City Council has a regular session meeting called for this coming Monday. Uh, they'll have a second vote on the budget amendment. They'll have an appointment of a city delegate to the PVA Assessment Board, the mayor's report, and also other items on the agenda. Meeting, set, meeting time is set for 7 o'clock this Monday. With that said, that's all we've got for calendar announcements. And in front of you are how you can get yours included on the show. Tell me, we'll tell everyone about it. Some of the greatest assets at the pharmacy at Hope Family Medical Center are the same reasons that they should be your provider. The relationship they share with their customers and the continuity of care they have with their physicians. The continuity of care here at Hope Pharmacy is excellent. We work directly with our physicians to ensure that we can provide all your needs. The doctors write it and your prescription is often ready before you are. They know your history. They have only your health and wellness in mind, all with the goal of making you feel better longer and saving you money. I'm very thankful and proud of our pharmacy. I feel we make a difference and I'm very proud to provide this service for my community. While this is only the second time that I've interviewed a foreign exchange student in McGoffin County, there have been local families opening their homes and their hearts to young people from all around the world for years, giving them often a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to study and learn and experience America and Eastern Kentucky. Tonight, I consider a shining example of a young man from Taiwan, Ian Chung, who has left a permanent impression on everyone he met, be it at school, church, on the baseball field, or elsewhere. And the Pruitts, Marie, Andrew, and the twins, Ethan and Ian, her Ian, who say that Ian Chung is more like family and that their lives are richer for having had the experience with him as well. An experience that they have actually had a few times before and one that they plan to have again. It's also an experience that they think that those who have the ability to do so should consider themselves. No, Ian is actually my fourth student. Um, I had one, my first one was a half year. He was here for six months through the uh, EF exchange program. And then I had one from Germany, one from Switzerland, and now Ian from Taiwan. A friend of mine, Sandy Reynolds, has, is it a, what they call an IEC. She's the one that places kids in, the, in this area. She had said that she had hosted before and was wanting to know if I'd be interested. And I was like, well, you know, we'll see. And so she showed me a bunch of kids from a lot of different places. And we talked, I talked to my family and they were like, well, yeah, let's see. And so we just decided to take our first one on a short-term basis and it worked out really well and we were hooked. So it was, it was an eye-opener for all my boys. You know, they got to experience um, the fact that there is life outside of McGoffin County. 
uh, there was a different culture outside of McLaughlin County, uh, but they also uh, have developed a lifelong friendship with someone that's on the other side of the world. I thought it was actually pretty cool. I thought it was going to be neat, a little experience, and by the end of it, I just pretty much include him as a brother. I have these two, him, and then the other three as brothers. Yeah, he's the first one that everybody went to. Paul was the closest, but he was the first that everybody went to. You say goodbye to? Really? Yeah, like he's the most well recepted student we've had so far. And there's proof of that in these photographs, but more importantly in the friendships that were formed and the bonds that will last, we believe, forever. I think I try everything here. <laughs> like, we go to uh, King's Island with Key Club, it's pretty cool. And church, we don't, I, I don't do that in my country. Use group, go to everywhere, see a, see a light in a, uh, Christmas. Yeah, it's very pretty. Ian was a very popular McGoffin County High School senior. He was immediately taken up by the senior class, a whole lot of other friends, and he got to do a whole lot of firsts while he was here. First time he ever saw snow, first time he ever fished, hunted, shot a gun, he went camping for the first time, got to play baseball on a team, and he saw more states than just Kentucky. Florida, he went on the senior trip, of course, to Washington and Virginia Beach. He also got to see Lake Erie, parts of West Virginia and Ohio. He celebrated his 18th birthday with his adoptive family, if you will, who, as Marie referred to, saw this as just as much of a learning experience and an opportunity for them as it was for Ian. Just how intense their studying is. They are so focused on education and they don't have the extracurricular activities that we have. and. You know, they're more, uh, I won't say forced, but it's more of a, you do this, you follow these guidelines, then here will we have, you know, so many choices and they have so much freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, that's been a, a yeah. big difference, I think. And the respect, you know, they're very, people, you know, he's been very, very respectful, um, you know, been very supportive of everything myself and my children have done. So that was a, that was a neat experience. And not only is Ian already making plans to come back to McGoffin County, the Pruitts are already planning for their next exchange student, something that they would recommend that maybe everyone at least consider. Yes, I would very strongly recommend, you know, anybody becoming a host parent. Um, it's an experience that you will never forget. Uh, you know, there's kids all over the world, you know, that are available to you. Um, you know, you can pretty much, if you... Pick your country and you can get a kid. You know, you can get a child, a boy, girl, both. You know, there's no limit of what you can have. You know, short term, six months, long term, year. You know, they're here for the whole school year. And, uh, you know, we've been very blessed. You know, like I said, we've really had uh, good kids. Uh, they've, you know, not been any problem. There's not been any, uh, you know, no behavior issues. Uh, you know, that they, they know that, you know, they're here to experience and have fun, and that's what they do. We've had a good good experience. And I you know, if anybody's interested, they can contact Sandy Reynolds. She would be glad to place someone. Uh, you know, right now we're getting ready to place new kids in the homes. Uh they're start shoot coming in uh the first of August. So if anybody's interested, it's not too late to get one. Does this encourage you guys to be a part of this when you get older and get on your own? Yes, yes. Whenever I get in my own house uh after college I'm probably gonna take a couple throughout the years. More than likely, because I, I love the experience. It's just, it's fun. And it, like, just opens every world. And it helps the, like, the teachers are nice to them. They try to help them. And everything is just amazing. I've actually got a few more words from Ian that I'm going to include in another time. I just kind of ran along and didn't realize it. So, uh, and also we're going to be checking up on him in New York before he flies out and back to Taiwan. So more on Ian Chung later. And if you want to know more about the uh, foreign exchange student program, Sandy Reynolds is, is the contact. And I'm sure Marie would also uh, share a little insight with you as well. I'll be right back.